So we have a wonderfully complicated lecture ahead of us. Hope you're excited. And as you saw in my message, if you wish, we can talk about your exam today. We can go over the solutions of those questions this way. You know whether or not you solved it right or wrong. Could you continue recording, please, into the into the office hours so that we? All right, I, I might make a separate recording. Thank you. For the uh, for the solutions, if of course we want to look at such solutions, yes, guys. Yes, definitely. Yes. All right, so let's begin. All right, guys, so we began uh, last time speaking about negative binomial distribution. And you remember what that is. Uh, it's very similar to geometric distribution, except we terminate the game when we collectively accrued our successes. And the distribution is asking for the number of failures that occurred uh, by the time we have accrued our successes. So a good example is the game What When We Are where uh, you have to accrue six successes to end, end the game. Yes? So, of course, the what when we're game, it's over if you accrued uh, six failures as well. Uh, but uh, in this case, we, we, just, we, we can accrue as many failures as we like, but we go all the way until we reach our successes. And this formula, I hope you remember, is uh, the probability mass function for x being equal to n, in other words, for gathering n failures. Now, the reason this formula is so, so probability of success is p, p to the power of r means we have r successes, one minus p to the power of n means we also have n failures. Now, how are those successes and failures distributed? You can see that uh, the game ends with the last success. So the very last entry must be a success. Do you agree? That's why I have only n plus r minus one degrees of freedom. Only the first n plus r minus one places can be either success or failure. The n plus r place must be a success. So far clear? And uh, then R minus one places, I just decide to choose the position of the successes, right? So where are the remaining R minus one successes? Where are they occurring? This then is the distribution. Now, would you be so kind, guys, and calculate the expected number of failures, the expected number of X. If you have to gather R, successes, how many failures will you gather on average? How many times do you need to repeat this class before you pass it? By the way, I'm joking. It's not so hard to uh, pass my class. So, you know, uh, you might be deceased and I will still pass you. So consider that when you ask for incomplete. Right? But if you cheat, if you uh, go behind my back, it will uh, get the paranoid side of me and then I'll fail you. And guys, of course, if you can turn your cameras on, uh, I have a good presence of people today. It's nice to see you. So I don't forget what you look like. Yes, the question, Sarah is, uh, and everybody else, to calculate expected value of X. So in this case, we want to gather our successes. And then the game terminates. What's the expected number of failures?
right? Maybe. Well then, guys, at least the idea. So what can we think, uh, think of it, right? We can break uh, the situation into uh, the number of failures be first, before first success, plus the number of failures uh, before second success, plus the number of failures before third success, all the way to R. You understand now I, I, we split it? So we can split it as follows. So X, the total number of failures, are the failures before first success, plus the failures before second success, plus the failures before third success, all the way to the R success. Make sense? So uh, the expected value of X is the expected value of X1 plus X2 all the way to XR, which is the sum of the expected values. Now, each of those are distributed exactly like the geometric. Remember, geometric is just a special version of the negative binomial. Geometric random variable is the number of success, sorry, of failures before one success. Are you with me? Right? So geometric is, it, it's, this is a, a more general distribution. Geometric is a sub distribution. Geometric is number of failures before one success. So uh, here we, it's just a sum of identically distributed geometric random variables. So the expected value is R multiplied by the expected value X1. Yes. And the expected value of a geometric random variable, we calculated it above. Remember this guys? We made a calculation and we realized it's one minus P over P, which you should know how to do the calculation for geometric random variable. Good. Remember the idea, we can just, uh, uh, we can figure out this infinite sum by uh, finding the infinite sum within itself. That's in essence how uh, we did it. We, we did recursively. Anybody needs a reminder of that or uh, you're good? We can move on. You understand how the geometric variable was calculated? If you had to do it even under time constraint, you would be able to accomplish it, I hope, yes? Now let's calculate uh, variable variance, guys. What is the variance for this random variable? Well, it's very similar, Kunyan, uh, to uh, geometric series. Yes, very similar. So the variance guys, because uh, the, the successes or failure of each trial is independent of the previous trial. Do you agree that means that uh, uh, that pretty much the, the values X1, the number of failures before first success is independent from the number of failures before second success and onwards. They are independent. So X1, X2, X3 and onwards are independent of one another. And that means that variance of sum is sum of variances. 
which means that uh, it's just R multiplied by the variance of the geometric random variable of geometric distribution. And we calculated that previously, this is the variance. The variance is one minus P over P squared for the geometric random variable. That means that we are dealing with uh, variance of the form R times one minus P over P squared. Here is an example of uh, negative, uh, is it called negative binomial? I think it is, yes. So there are N types of toys in serial boxes where you buy uh, the box, uh, any one of the N types is equally likely to be in this box. How many boxes do you need to buy on average to get the full set of toys? So when you have a kid and your kid wants to collect all the toys from a cereal box, how many cereal boxes will you have to buy on average? That's the question. You understand? <clears throat> Let me know if you want us to do it together or you'd like to think about it before. Can you give us a second to think about it, please? Sorry? Can you, I just wanted a second to just think about it. Yeah, okay, so let's wait a few minutes. I'll give you guys, let's do it like this. I'll give you four minutes and I'll ask you what, what's going on, okay? I'll be back in four minutes and you think about it.
Well, I'm back. How are you doing? Well, so negative binomial distribution simply means you know, that uh, you are gathering failures until you have accrued a total of some number of success. That's all it is, right? So whenever, whenever this is of interest to you, how many failures you would have before that amount of success, each of those, of course, independent of uh, another. Uh, so it, each success or failure in this game is independent of the previous one. So here, guys, let's do this question together. So X is the total number of serial, uh, is the number of serial, serial boxes collected until you have all the toy types, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to define X1, the number of serial boxes you need to gather to get the first new toy. X2, the number of serial boxes you will need to gather to get the next new toy. So once you have a first toy, then uh, when, when will you gather the next new toy? And all the way to Xn, that's the um, time when you gather the last new toy. You understand? Those random variables are not independent as we had before, because uh, once I have a first new toy, the probability, of course, for gathering a new toy is decreased, right? X1, you will gather the new toy as soon as you buy a package. X2, you might buy a package and get the previous toy. You follow, but uh, it's still X1 plus X2 plus X3 plus Xn is the number of boxes you gathered until you get that toy. And each of those uh, Xks are geometrically distributed. Do you agree? Each of them are geometrically distributed, but with different probabilities of success. So let's see, uh, what's the probability of success uh, for Xk? That's the K of uh, a new toy, okay? Uh, if you prefer, we can do that. Uh, what's the probability of success? Uh, or what's the probability? So, so let's say X1, uh, probability of X1 equal to one, for instance, is equal to one. Do you agree? In other words, uh, with X1, as soon as I get uh, a box, I will right away get a new toy because I had no toys before. Yes, but X2 is now geometrically distributed. This is also kind of a, de a deformed geometric distribution. In this case, uh, there is just no probability of failure. Probability of failure is zero. That's why it's so quick. Okay, so uh, we will have to only uh, gather um, gather one box, right? Now, what's the probability of uh, X2 equal to the number J? Probability that X2 equals to J is, uh, um, is that first of all, I, I should not be gathering the same toy. Do you agree? So that means I, I had, uh, what does it mean, J? That means that I had, um, that I had uh, gathered, that's, uh, that's actually afterwards, right? So that means that I either gather it right away or I gather it, uh, you know, uh, after, after a, second, a second box I buy or third or fourth, and this is J box after the, after the first box was bought. So probability of X2 equal to J is what, guys? It means that uh, I am not going to pick the, uh, the box that was uh, that contained toy number one type. So this is um, and this probability is n minus one over n. Maybe I should write it later. So the probability that I fail to uh, get uh, a new toy in the first j minus one trials. Yes that I fail to get a new toy is that I'm getting that same toy and that is one over N, right? I, it's the same toy that I got from experiment uh, from the first procedure when I got my first toy. And then the, 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 the final JF attempt was success and the success is with probability N minus one over N. 
that's the probability of success for x2 equal to j. Yes? So what is the expected value of x2? The expected value of x2, for instance, is uh, the summation where j is 1 to infinity of 1 over n j minus 1 n minus 1 over n that's the uh, times uh, times j that's the expected value right times j and so uh, this is very similar to uh, a geometric uh, random variable as you can see yes so uh, its probability is its probability is in general equal to um, to 1 over p. The reason it's 1 over p this time is that uh, we don't just count the number of failures, but we uh, count uh, the number of failures and the one success. So it's going to be 1 over p for this type of distribution. You see where 1 minus p is uh, 1 over n in that previous example, and p is n minus 1 over n. Are you with me? Yes, guys, you're with me. I just, you see, I don't want to calculate it separately for each of them. So I'm going to calculate it for XK. What is XK? XK means I gathered K minus one toys. So failure means that I gather one of the K minus one toys. So uh, probability of failure is, uh, is K minus one. You see, probability of uh, failure is uh, N minus K, sorry, right? Uh, N minus, uh, well, a k minus probability, sorry, probability of failure is k minus one over n, and probability of success is n minus that number. So that's what you have over here. And so, what is the expected value of uh, my full uh, var my my full uh, x? It's the sum of the expected values of x one, x two, x three, and so on. And so that would be uh, accordingly because it's 1 over p, it will be the summation from k equal to 1 all the way to n of n divided by n minus k plus 1, which uh, is the same as if you factor out the numerators n, it will be the same as 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1 all the way to plus 1. So this is the same as n multiplied by, the, by, by a finite harmonic series sum. Here it is. So for instance, if there are five toy uh, types, the average number of serial boxes is five multiplied by one plus one half plus one third plus one quarter plus one five. So on average, you will have to gather um, over 11 boxes. You would have to buy 11 boxes to get all the toys. Understood? All the toy types. Uh, I stands uh, just a summation i stands just uh, just looking at the summation i just uh, can sum it as uh, um, one o one over one one over two one over three so i i is just uh, index nothing special about it i'm just saying this is just uh, the harmonic this is the f this is a partial sum of the harmonic series multiplied by n good you understand the idea, guys, right? I mean, it can be a tiny bit annoying to calculate, but uh, you go there right away. It's just the sum of geometric random variables, in essence. Now let's talk about negative hypergeometric random variables. Uh, I actually am very curious myself. I don't remember what it is, right? As I never remember the names. So let's try to see what it is. So. Urn contains W white and B black balls. The balls are randomly drawn one by one without replacement until R white balls have been obtained. So negative hypergeometric is uh, uh, you have W and B. And in this case, you must sample uh, uh, R white balls. So it's, you see, it's very similar to the previous distribution to um, I think it was called hypergeometric, but in this case, it's sampling without replacement. You understand? So once you had success, the next success is less likely. 
Do you understand what I mean? In, in the previous example, success or failure was exactly the same uh, for all the situation. Good? So in this case, uh, you cannot go forever. It, can, it cannot have that you, uh, you sample uh, beyond a certain amount because uh, if, you, if you have to sample uh, long enough, you would definitely have everything. Right? You would, if you sample again and again and again, you would have gathered uh, all the B plus W uh, balls that that are contained. So the sampling cannot go beyond that number. And you have to gather exactly R wide balls. So the way we can describe this distribution, it's negative geometric with parameters W, B, and R, where R is the total number of white balls we are required to sample. So let's try to calculate, guys, see if you can do that. Can you uh, tell me what is the mass uh, distribution? So what's the probability mass function? What's the probability that I will, uh, that, that, that P is equal to, uh, P of X equal to K, what's that probability? That means that uh, what's the probability that, um, uh, that I sampled K black balls? So it's basically uh, probability I had K failures here. It's the same as we had before, guys. It's like the negative binomial, except uh, without, uh, re with, without replacement, you understand? So, so your success rate is dec decreased. Once you have one successful result, the next one is not equally likely. And failures will affect you. Success or failures are not uh, independent. So what's the probability you would have had uh, K wrongful samples? Kafka protocol, guys, what, what the K means. K means you sampled K black balls and you have sampled R white balls. Agreed? That's all it means. We will do it in two ways.
Ready? So sampling is, uh, we have to account for order because you see we stop once we have gathered uh, our white balls. Do you agree? So we can solve it uh, uh, several ways. Here is uh, method one. So uh, probability that X equal to K, do you all remember what it means? This is just simply, uh, we had K black balls in the sample. I can do it this way. For the numerator, I can ask myself which specific white balls were selected. You agree? Which specific white balls were selected? So that would be W, that would be uh, W choose R because I always have to have R uh, white balls. And uh, since I selected K black balls, that would be B choose K. Now I can give them order. Do you agree guys? I can arrange them in order. Now what order can I give them? I mean, the very last must be a white ball. You agree? The very last must be a white ball. Which of the white balls uh, should that be? Well, one of the R's that I selected, so it would be uh, R is the last one. One of the, uh, it's either uh, first, second, third of the ones I selected. And uh, then the remaining balls can be, uh, can be in any order, right? So altogether, how many uh, remaining balls do we have? We have R plus K minus one, uh, balls and they can be anywhere along the first uh, R plus K minus one positions. That's my numerator. Understood? Yes, guys, we were forgetting Kafka protocol, are we? You look very sad, guys, what's going on? Uh, do you understand me or not? Or is it raining outside and, and pressure is dropping? Yes. So do you understand how I calculated the numerator? So I am thinking very straightforwardly. So the game stops once I gather R white balls. What's the probability I gathered additionally K black balls? You understand I continue sampling. What terminates the game is that I have R white balls. I could have gathered no black balls or, or one black ball or two or the way to B, right? So K can be any number between zero to B. Agreed? Now what's the probability I gathered exactly K balls, black balls? Well, if I gathered K black balls, uh, I can ask myself, first of all, which white balls did I gather? I had to gather R of them. W choose R is the number, is the white balls that I gathered. You see, this just arranges the white balls that I gathered without telling, uh, telling me where I picked it in the game. First of all, let me just uh, uh, check guys, quick comprehension check. Tell me if X is equal to K, how many runs did the game have? So in other words, it's a lottery, you know, lottery, you've seen lotteries, you know, a ball pops up, whoop, first ball, second ball, third ball, right? How many balls popped out in this lottery, please? Write down in my uh, comments if you follow. Exactly, K plus R. Everybody sees that uh, this lottery had K plus R balls. I can, in this case, I can presume each ball is individual. Some of them are individuals and black and some of them are individuals and white. Now I had to gather exactly our white balls. I didn't have to gather the black balls. Good. So in this case, I gathered our white balls, which specific white balls did I gather without telling me where they appeared in the sequence of this uh, lottery and which black balls did I gather? So B choose K, W choose R are the uh, particular possible combinations of balls that I gathered. You see, so I'm, I'm reporting the outcome. I'm first reporting which white balls were gathered, then which black balls were gathered. Then I am reporting uh, which white ball was the last gathered because uh, the last gathered had to be white. Do you understand? Because I stopped gathering once I have enough white. 
So which of those is the last uh, white ball gathered? There are possibilities. You see guys, what's my Kafka protocol, which I have in my head and you should have in your heads as well. So my Kafka protocol is uh, R white, uh, K black, then uh, position uh, last white. That's last white. Uh, and then I list either position, uh, you know, I, 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 I list which was the last white, which of those, right? So this is one, two, all the way to R. So I list, that's where the R comes from. There are possibilities. I list which one came as the last white and then uh, uh, or, order of remaining. Uh, order remaining, something like this. You understand? That's my uh, Kafka protocol. That's what I'm writing in the numerator. Now, what is the situation in the denominator in that case? In the denominator, I could have had, uh, for sure, I had to have, uh, uh, you know, white balls. Do you agree? I had to have our uh, white balls. No, I'm sorry. What am I talking about? Uh, for, so, so if, if, if by, by just sampling it out, I'm just considering it, uh, forgetting about the game. What's the pro probability of having done that? So. Uh, if it's if it's uh, with uh, k black balls, and if I, if I, if my game was uh, um, was r plus k, so I could have gathered in general randomly since it's it's any random gathering. I could have gathered um, I could have gathered any uh, one of the uh, from w plus b. I could have gathered. Uh, any uh, any R plus K. That's it. Yes, so by, by, by just looking at this particular outcome, forgetting about the game, what's the likelihood of having pulled those balls this particular way? Um, it would be any one of the uh, W plus B choose R um, plus K. And I could have uh, extracted them since I consider order here in any uh, R plus a factorial order, right? You understand uh, how I calculated uh, this uh, particular probability? We can do something else. That's just method one. Here I, I, I drew you um, uh, that same exact uh, expression that I just had. You see it? This is my Kafka protocol. Here are the white balls pick, the black balls pick, last white ball, order of remaining balls. That's for the numerator. And uh, the denominator is uh, any ordering of R plus K balls that I could have sampled sequentially. That's one way to figure it out. Everybody understands? Yeah. Now you can do something else, guys. You can do something else. And um, for that, here it is, guys. Here is uh, another uh, entirely different uh, situation. So we can say that uh, the probability, this is uh, another formula, is um, we have R plus K minus one over R minus one. So this here is, uh, is just, we imagine that, uh, that we uh, select R plus K, we select R plus K uh, balls, and then uh, they all magically change colors. You understand? They all magically change colors once the selection is done. That's the very clever kind of non-intuitive idea here. So uh, then uh, what happens is that we will have to, uh, uh, we will have to have the, in, in my sample of exactly R plus K balls, the exactly R of those balls will decide to become white and the remaining will decide to become black in such a way that exactly in my entire sample, exactly W will become white and B will become black. You understand? 
So they have imagined that, that, that what happens in the lottery is that first the balls are popped out and you don't see anything. And then once the balls pop out, just without randomness, they just go out one after another after another. And then all the balls in this lottery that are remaining in the ball and the ones that you extracted simultaneously change color. Exactly W becoming white, exactly B becoming black. Yes? And then in your sample, magically, it will happen that R of them will become white. Good? So uh, what happens is that uh, R of them uh, will become white and the very last one becomes white. You see, we have basically R positions, right? So which of those positions uh, of, the, um, of the R plus K positions become white? So it's R plus K minus one, choose R minus one because the last position has to become white for this to be a success, for this to be over. You understand? You see this guys, how I calculate this thing? It's R plus K minus one over R minus one. Right, that's why. And then uh, what is this? This talks about uh, the balls that remained in, uh, uh, in the lottery ball. Right, so if this is what happened, if exactly R became white here, then, uh, um, then uh, and the rest became black, so then how many will become white here? It's W plus B minus R, because uh, the, 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 now the balls remaining in the earn our W plus B uh, minus R minus K, because uh, our R plus K guys is uh, how many balls we had here. So it's minus R plus K. And then uh, uh, exactly, exactly W minus R of those will have to become white. And here we have W plus B, choose W becoming white. It's very poetic. And it's very counterintuitive, right? So maybe I, I should uh, see. So this reminds me of one of my uh, favorite poems. So I just even wrote it here. I'm not sure if it would help you, but uh, this is uh, the poem by Tsvitaeva. Когда пленясь прозрачностью медузы, ее коснемся мы капризом рук. Она как пленник, заточенный в узы, вдруг побледнеет и погибнет вдруг. And I gave a crude translation. When uh, you touch a jellyfish, uh, when, when you are captivated by the transparency of the jellyfish, you touch it with your capricious hands. She, like a prisoner, suddenly turns pale and suddenly dies. Yes? So that's exactly the analogy of what happened here in probability. You first selected those uh, transparent balls and then only then they chose to, they, they, they change their color. You see those two ideas, they produce the same probability. Sometimes one is better than another. So now guys, let's try to calculate the expected value. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, so let's calculate the expect, it's not easy. This is one of the hardest expected values that we will calculate. So how do you calculate the expected value of this, I forget what it's even called, variable. Here is how we can uh, think about it, guys, right? So uh, first of all, we can, uh, we can break it into um, x1 plus x2 plus xr. And that is, uh, what is, does it mean, guys, just like before? X1 is the number of black balls gathered before the first white ball. X2 is the number of, uh, white, of black balls gathered before the next white ball, the second. Do you understand? And all the way to XR, the ones gathered before the very last black ball. Now their distribution is complicated of those variables exactly. You agree? It's a complicated distribution because it's no longer geometric, it's no longer independent, right? What happened before will affect what will happen later. So they're very strongly and complicatedly dependent on one another. But uh, what's the expected value, guys? The expected value of X1, or it doesn't matter for the expected value, the expected value is just simply uh, the sum of them, yes? It's the sum of expected value of X1, X2, X3, etc. yes? 
So then guys, uh, uh, then what we are going to imagine uh, happening here. So uh, we can imagine that, um, uh, that the black balls are uh, numbered one through B and uh, the and the white balls are numbered one through W. Here it is, you just, you just place them here as one. Uh, we just, here's first white ball, second white ball, third, uh, all the way to uh, the last white ball. And uh, you know, you have all together uh, W plus one places, W plus one places. So then uh, we, can, we can ask for each XK for each XK, we are asking uh, which particular black balls uh, are contained there, right? XK is uh, the black balls that are before um, the KF white ball, okay? Which of them are located there? So uh, we are going to write each XK as a further summation of uh, YK1 uh, all the way to YKB. And it's uh, and each of them is equal to one if the JF black ball, so uh, so YKJ is equal to one if the JF black ball is in KF space between K minus one and KF white ball, and zero otherwise. Are you following what I'm saying, guys? I'm I'm uh, accounting uh, where are uh, where are those particular uh, balls located? Okay. So I want to calculate the expected value of XK. In other words, how many uh, black balls are between white ball K minus one and uh, white ball K? How many between them? So uh, the way I will estimate it is uh, I will say, okay, is black ball number one there? Is black ball number two there? And I'm just gonna add them uh, all together, right? So, so uh, this is the variables uh, YK1 all the way to YKB. Each of them is one if uh, it locates uh, this, this particular black ball there. So what's the expected value of YKJ guys? So each individual black ball is equally likely to be in this, that, that, or that region. So it's equally likely to be anywhere in uh, among W plus one regions. Do you agree? So the probability it's located uh, in uh, the right place, in the cave place, is one over W plus B. You follow? So uh, the expected value of that uh, variable is one times one over W plus B, and that means it's one over W plus B. And this is uh, true if you repeat this with any one uh, remaining. So the expected value of XK accordingly is B divided by W plus B because they, they have the same distribution with all swipes. It's B over W plus B. And that's true of any XK. And since that's true of any XK, the expected value is RB divided by W plus one. Do you follow? Or lost entirely? It's a difficult one. questions. So uh, to, cal to calculate this expected value, you break uh, the variables uh, twice. So you break uh, X into a sum of variables and then each of the uh, parts you can break again into sum of variables. Do you see why, that, why, why you can do that? Look at it. Here is a white ball numbered one. White ball number two. Three. And so on, right? All the, so uh, let, let's say, let's say, Let's say for a moment we have, uh, just to make it simpler, let's say uh, we have only three, three white balls. Good, only three white balls in my game. 
and so we have w is equal to three let me say that r has to be equal to two and i, I would like the black balls to be uh, to be numbered well let's let's say uh, five five black balls so uh, what I do is uh, what I do is this guy. So how many black balls will I have gathered if I am gathering two white balls at least, right? So so the expected value of x is the expected value of x1 plus x2 Yes because uh, because I have to gather two white balls. Do you agree? So what is what is X1? X1 is how many black balls I gathered before getting the very first white ball. X2 is the number of black balls I gathered between first and second white ball I gathered. Do you agree? So uh, basically in, my, in this picture that I draw here, uh, this here is your X1. This is your X1 and this is your X2. You understand? I mean, I can imagine the sequence to be made. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna gather whatever number, but the sequence is just made. I just uh, place whatever balls there and then it's like a pest dispenser once, they, once, it, once uh, it's all there. X1 can be equal to zero, X2 can be equal to zero, right? And it can be equal to other numbers. Do you agree? So how do I then, uh, so how do I calculate it? So clearly this is the summation of x1 plus the expected value of x2. Now, what is, what is x1, guys? So x1 is the summation of y1, 1 plus y1, 2 plus y1, 3 plus y14 plus y15 what are those uh, 1 uh, 1 1 1 2 1 3 1 4 1 5 stand for they stand to, for uh, which particular black ball is there right so uh, what i what i can say is is for instance that uh, y1 k it will be equal to 1 if kf ball give a uh, black ball uh, in x1 so to speak in this region and zero otherwise are you with me so far Now, uh, what's the probability, what's, what's the expected value of Y1K? That's just the probability that uh, it would be in this region. Now, how many regions are there? One, two, three, four. It's equally likely to be anywhere in those uh, four regions. So the probability that it will be in the first region is one out of four. So the expected value is one out of four. Yes? You look uh, like a train run over you, some of you, I think. So it's one over four there. So, uh, and it's true about any one of them. It's true about any one of them. So that means that the expected value of X1 is uh, five over four. Yes, it's five over four. And uh, similarly, you can calculate the expected value of x2. There is no difference. Expected value of x2. Happens to be also 5 over 4. So altogether, the expected value of x is uh, 5 over 2. So it's 2 times 5 over 4, which is uh, 5 over 2. That's the expected value. Questions? A 
lot of people disappeared, I think. Yes, because there are four uh, spots where the black ball can uh, appear. So by symmetry, if it's randomly sampled, each black ball is equally likely to be in any one of those spots. You see? So uh, how do I um, calculate the expected value uh, for X1? I'm just uh, asking, okay, I'm gonna add for, all, for every black ball that is there. So I'm gonna do that the following way. I'm gonna ask, is black ball number one there? If yes, I add plus one. If not, I add plus zero. You see? And then I do that for black ball number two, three, four, five. Why is uh, expected value? Expected value of X is the expected number of black balls altogether. I cannot have black balls beyond uh, the second white I sampled because here I said uh, sample, no, uh, just sample exactly two white balls. You see, I continue sampling until I reach and I have two white balls. Uh, so uh, I'm well, so I'm not pulling anything. I mean, pulling is uh, um, is just uh, looking at at a pest dispenser. You understand? I, I can view this as if it's a pest dispenser that was uh, uh, randomly arranged. You see, I, I can view it as pulling things out, but mathematically there is no difference between uh, that and having a pest dispenser. So uh, I'm just now describing how the pest dispenser is arranged. Good. Understood? Because if yes, you know what we're going to do next. We're going to calculate the variance of this uh, random variable. Hmm? So ask me questions before uh, we continue. Variance more ugly. Doable as you will see in a moment. It's, it, it's uh, hard maybe to come up with this idea, guys, it takes, it takes a while, but um, you, you, will, you, will, you will have nice questions about expectation. You know, there are always interesting questions about expectation that can be asked. All right, so in general, the, um, in general, guys, the expected value of, uh, uh, of the random variable X will be R times B divided by W plus one. I hope you understand why now. Yes? Think about it again, guys. What's the situation? You're just counting. Um, it's the same as with the geometric. It's just you do that without replacement. That's the challenge, right? Without replacement, that means that each time you have success or failure, that affects the success or failure of the next time you, you sample. Right? So here we are asking, what's the um, expected number of black balls or expected number of failures in this situation? Given that we have to gather, uh, have to gather our successes. Right? And so for that, we can just partition it. How many uh, failures before first success, failures before second success, just like we did with the, with the geometric random variable. But then it becomes, uh, the second challenge is okay, but it's not geometric, right? Uh, so how, what do I do next? At least, so, so then I think next, okay, well, I can figure out uh, between, uh, between two successes, whether or not a particular black ball appeared. And by symmetry, right, by symmetry, each particular black ball can be anywhere I like it to be. Yes, it could be, uh, it could be anywhere between the W uh, white balls, which means it has W plus one places. And so the, um, the probability it will be where, where um, it, it will be in the cave place is one over W plus one. And that's the expected value then. That, that it would be added. Yes? Now let's calculate variance. 
let me know if you would like to try yourself or you would like us to do it together. Ready guys, let's do the calculation together, I guess. You're a sad bunch today. 
So here is the situation. So variance, guys, is the variance of x1 through xr. And um, unlike the previous situation, uh, we cannot ignore covariance because they are not independent. Do you agree? The size of x1 will influence the size of x2, x3, etc. Nonetheless, by themselves, each of them is identically distributed. Do you see that? Each of those variables is identically distributed because uh, there is no bias, there is no preference uh, for the balls to be anywhere. So that means that uh, x1 uh, can be any number and with any probability, uh, you know, and x2 can be the same. You see, so if I just focus on any place, I, the, without bias, uh, that any place will have uh, a particular number of balls with the same frequency as any other place. I'm not sure if you understood my clever explanation. I hope you do. You see, so if you have tunnel vision like this, I'm watching the place x2. And if I look at the frequencies here in X2, there is zero black balls one time, and then another time 10, and another time uh, one, you know, the frequencies will be the same if I look at the place X3 or X4 or X5, right? I would see the same frequencies over time because there is no bias, no preference. So they would be equally likely, each ball is equally likely anywhere. Each black ball is equally likely to be in any of the um, gaps. Do you understand? Yes, guys, it's not always easy to uh, communicate it, but uh, so uh, this variance is the summation of the variances plus uh, the summation of the covariances. Now what happens? So first for the variance, guys, uh, uh, the variance is the same as R times variance of X1 and the covariances are the same as R times r minus one covariance x1 x2 do you agree i can collapse uh, the summation to to just uh, comparing variance for computing variance for x1 and to computing covariance for x1 x2 do you agree and multiplying it by n times n minus one because uh, we have uh, in covariance we have every combination of every x uh, uh, i with every xk and twice they meet, right? So x1 meets with x2 and x2 meets with x1, twice. So we have this uh, r times r minus one. And so what happens? Now, uh, first of all, I can look at, uh, the, um, at the expected value. So I have x1 is, is for instance, y11 all the way to y1b. And so what is the variance of x1? It is, um, so now guys, I have independence. Do you agree? Because uh, where the white ball is, sorry, when one black ball is located, it will not affect where the other black ball is located. Do you agree? So in the expected value of, uh, in the expected value, In the expected value of uh, x1, it would be expected, well, it would be, sorry, the variance of x1, it will be the variance of y11 plus variance of 1, uh, 2, all the way to variance of yb. I hope you under understand. Yes? Because, uh, because what is y11? It, it's, it's, uh, it's a variable that tests whether or not uh, the first black ball is in the first gap. And that will not affect where the uh, second black ball will be located in, in which gap. So they are independent. So uh, that would be simply variance of the, the sum is sum of variances. So it would be B times variance of one, Y11. Now what's the variance of Y11? It's the expected value of uh, Y11 squared minus uh, uh, that, that number squared. So the expected value of y11 squared is going to be still the same probability. It's, it's still, it's, it's the same. When you square this random variable, you get the same thing as y11. Squaring it doesn't change anything. It's not changing the labels. So that would be one over w plus one minus one over w plus one squared times b, and this is the quantity you obtain. So that's for the, that's as much for the variance. I just then afterwards have to multiply that by r. Now I need to calculate covariance of x1 and x2. And that will be the expected value of x1, x2 minus uh, the product of the expected value separately, right? So um, 
uh, that is the same because they're the same distributed, it will be minus the expected value of x1 squared. Now the expected value of x1 times x2 is the product of the, of the random variables here. And I look at the combinations here right, that I can have uh, between one. So the, how many combinations can I have? I can have here, um, uh, <clears throat> I can uh, simply uh, have here uh, the, the combination where, um, uh, well, I, you see that any time that the uh, one random variable uh, with, with the index one meets another random variable with the, with the second index equal to one, uh, the expected value would be zero because uh, uh, let's say you cannot have y11 one, one and y21 two, one together because uh, bo one cannot be in uh, first place and second gap at the same time. So that would be uh, that would be um, zero, and so the only uh, combinations that are viable are uh, uh, one from here with one that is not uh, that has a different index. And so, how many ways to match them? There are um, there are uh, they're just uh, uh, for for each one of them there are uh, b minus one matches. So for this one there are b minus one matches. For the next one there are. Uh, b minus one matches. So it's b times b minus one, this expected value, okay? So this is all gone, it's just uh, this part that's ma that matters. And so when is that probability equal to one? It, it, it's probability that, that, that each of them is in the right place. It's one over w plus one squared. So having calculated that number, uh, you can now, now you have the covariance. It's now already easy to compute and then simply just combine the results. This is my result and again, check my calculations. Good, we understand or understand nothing today. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video. We can talk about the exam if you'd like. Think about it, you can read the notes and uh, it's, it's pretty clever guys. It's not easy and it's not very easy to explain, especially of the, because of the noise that I hear here. My brother is drilling and bothering me there, yes. So, wait, professor, could yes. you keep could you keep recording while you go over the exam? Because some some people have a class at seven. Yeah, yeah, I will I will keep recording. Thank you.